Hello friends, this video on principles of inheritance part 32 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now this was another important contribution which was given by Morgan. So Morgan talked about linkage, Morgan talked about sex linked inheritance. So these were some of the very important contribution of Morgan. Apart from this, Morgan also talked about gene mapping. So gene mapping, mapping is an extremely useful technique. Now, once I talk about it, you will be able to understand its significance. So what is the meaning of gene mapping? So it is maybe the name as far as the name is, uh, maybe a map like structure where we can locate genes. So yes, exactly. What is a map? Map basically helps you to locate places, right? So if you look at the map of the world, you can actually locate the different countries where they are located, what is there in their neighborhood, etc. So similarly, what will you do if you want to locate genes? So where will you locate the genes? They are located on chromosomes. So we will try to locate gene on a chromosome. So if now when we talk about linkage, we talk about whether the genes are near or the genes are far apart. So when can we talk about the distance between the genes? When we are able to locate them on the chromosome. So gene mapping is all about locating genes on chromosomes. So the linkage and crossing over between two genes are inversely related. That's what I was talking about, right? That the more linked the two genes are, the lesser the possibility of crossing over and hence lesser the possibility of recombinations. So that is linkage and crossing over are inversely related. If two genes are very close on the same chromosome, then what will happen if they are very close? That is the scenario of complete linkage. So there will be no crossing over, they will be inherited together and there will be no recombination at all. Similarly, if the two genes are far apart on the same chromosome, then the possibility of crossing over will increase, right? So the possibility of crossing over is increasing. That means greater the distance between the genes, greater the frequency of crossing over. This is the simple relationship. So as the distance between the gene increases, now let us suppose if this is a chromosome, if this is gene A and this is gene B, so that is one scenario. There is another scenario where this is gene A and this is gene B. Now here the distance between gene A and gene B is less as compared to the distance between A and B here. So that means the possibility of crossing over is more in this case because the distance between the gene is more in this case. Now, the same friends example. So when the friends are loosely connected, they are far away from each other, there is more possibility that they will join some other group. So they will, they will recombine with some other group. Recombination will happen. Recombination means it is happening due to crossing over. Right? So th this is the simple concept based on which the entire concept or the entire logic of gene mapping was found. So the gist of whatever we discussed so far is that if it is a complete linkage, so when you we say a complete linkage, it is going to be extremely close and linked, maybe something like this. So if this is the scenario, in that case only parental traits will be seen and there will be no recombinants. So that is the first scenario. The second scenario is incomplete linkage. Now in incomplete linkage, what is going to happen? Incomplete linkage, you have two genes, let us suppose A and B, they are linked but not completely. So that means you have more parental traits but you have some recombinations but less recombinations. So that is the scenario for incomplete linkage. The third option is unlinked genes. So in that what happens that they are, they show independent assortment and in independent assortment what happens, they, they are not at all linked basically. So in this case they have 50% parental and 50% recombinants. So the num frequency of recombinants increase in this case. Now, with respect to this, there is a term called recombination frequency. And what is it? It is the frequency that determines the number of recombinants formed in the progeny during a test cross. So it, this will actually keep a track of the number of recombinants. Now, depending on the re number of recombinants, you can actually decide the distance between the two genes on a chromosome. Because if the number of recombinants are more, that means 
more crossing over has taken place the more crossing over has taken place what does that mean that means the genes are far apart even if they are located on the same chromosome they are far apart whereas if the number of recombinants are less that means crossing over has not taken place much that means that the genes are more towards complete linkage so the genes are closer together so the distance between the genes will can be governed by recombination frequency and how do we calculate recombination frequency we calculate it this way number of recombinants formed divided by the total population formed multiplied by 100 so this gives you the percentage of recombination frequency now how does this combine this recombination percentage helps us to locate genes on a chromosome now Morgan and his student Alfred Stute went, they used this concept to create genetic maps. Now how did they create genetic maps? Basically they calculated the recombination frequency, right? Whenever you have to locate two genes, what they did, they performed a test cross. Now once they performed a test cross, they got a recombination frequency because if you perform a test cross, it is very easy to find out the output or the I mean offspring population and then it is easy to calculate recombination frequency. Once you have that recombination frequency that can be utilized to locate the genes on the chromosomes. How? Right? So that is what we'll see now. So genetic map is a technique to determine the location and relative distance between genes on a chromosome. So what happens in this case is the basis of genetic mapping are genes are linearly arranged on a chromosome. Now it is not that they are arranged in some pattern. They are all located one after another. So if this is a chromosome, this is how the genes are located one after another in a linear sequence. And crossing over between two genes is proportional to the distance between them. So the same things again. So they are the basis of the genetic map. So the basic concept behind designing the genetic map was that 1% of recombination was considered as one map unit. So in the previous slide, we saw that how do we calculate the recombination frequency. So now let us suppose in, in any of the crosses, the recombination frequency comes out to be 12%. So that would actually mean 12 map units. So 12 units on a map, like how you have graph. In graph also you have boxes, right? So each box is like one unit. So similarly, when you say map unit, it is trying to say that on a map of chromosome, one unit. So the 12% will correspond to 12 units. That means the distance between those two genes will be 12 units on a chromosome, on a genetic map. Clear? Okay. So let us try to see how exactly <clears throat> a genetic map is created. So genes are actually placed on a hypothetical chromosome based on the map units. So this is how we design a chromosome and then we say that okay so if the map units is 2 that means the distance between the two genes is 2 lying on the same chromosome. So this is how it looks like. So this is the hypothetical chromosome and on this you have the various map units right. So you can actually divide it into several units. So if I say that the, the distance between gene A and gene B is 3 units, so we consider that this is going to be 3 units. That means the recombination frequency that will come out if you perform a dihybrid cross of these two genes is going to be 3%. Now, by now you know how do we perform a cross between these two. So that's what I was talking about right in the previous slide. So basically this is how the genetic maps are constructed. So let us look at some of the examples. Let us suppose we say that genes A, B, C and D occur on the same chromosome. Okay. Crossover values for the pairs of genes are, if you cross over A and B, you get 35%, A and C, 5%, C and B, 40% and B and E, 10% and C and D is 30%. So what is the order of genes on linkage map? So thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.